Man got shot. Still in catalytic, com catalytic converters over in Chicago. Check it out. A man is recovering after he was shot in Jefferson Park early this morning. Family members tell us that he interrupted a catalytic converter theft operation. It happened in the 5900 block of West Eastwood Avenue. CBS 2 Charday Gray is live at the 16th Police District. Charday, I understand you spoke with the victim's brother. How's he doing? That's right, Marie, the brother or the he tells us that his brother is out of the hospital and recovering at home. He didn't want us to show his face as he explained the suspect fired at least 30 to 40 shots. Something as little as a catalytic converter being stolen turned into a whole shootout. Someone heard a loud disturbance outside the family home at Eastwood and Austin in Jefferson Park. They saw the suspect cutting a catalytic converter from a car and threatened to call police. That's when the 22 year old brother heard the commotion and stepped outside. The gunman opened fire. Right when he opens the back door of the gangway, he just started spraying. And after that, he realized he was hit trying to like flee the scene, you know. Several evidence markers with shell casings lined the street. Bullet holes on a red garage door, fence, plant pots, gutter, and the roof of a car are a grave reminder of what happened. The brother tells us the victim was shot twice, once in the shoulder and once in the leg. Reporting live in Jefferson Park, short acre. Wait a minute, wait a minute. When I seen the headline for this and I decided to use it as a part of Quick Hits today, I didn't know that the person that got shot was the person whose car was getting robbed and the catalytic converter was getting stripped off of the car, or cut off of the bottom of the car. I thought the person that got shot was the actual theft. You, wait, 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 wait. Chicago is not a real place in real life. Every day, it's almost impossible how much you guys surprise me. Shout out to DJ Second. Definitely gonna be reading that super chat shortly. You telling me because bullets are expensive. I know y'all think that bullets are cheap, but they out there still in catalytic converters, so he can't be doing that well, okay? So you telling me that homie had 30, 30 to 40 bullets, sprayed everything, sprayed, sprayed the flower pot, sprayed the cars, sprayed the houses, sprayed the garages, sprayed the doors, shot everything. He was lucky to only get hit two times. You telling me that the dude walked out in the middle of you stealing his stuff, and he decided to spray and shoot you twice? Let me tell you something, bro. I know y'all keep telling me, oh no, Chicago really ain't that bad. It really ain't that bad. When I get news stories from other places, and I get them from everywhere, I get news stories from literally all over the country, y'all send them to me all the time. I don't hear this type of stuff. This is not normal. This is something else. This is a spirit, honestly. Yo, there is a demon, a horde of demons that is running around in Chicago, terrorizing the city. Okay, cool. It may not be that bad in certain areas. I give you that. That's dope. But are y'all really listening to some of these stories? They not messing around over there. And they short 2,000. That's the caveat is that Chicago is short 2,000 officers. They're short 2,000 police officers. And the irony of it all is that the Democratic National Convention is coming there in a couple of months. Anyways, continuing on with the show, a uh, woman attacked from behind in San Francisco, another unreal place. New at 11, she never saw it coming. The video, almost hard to watch. A San Francisco woman is attacked from, by a stranger from behind. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Hold on, fam. Hold on. Hold on. I'm not a fan of criminals, and I'm not a fan of crime. I'm not a fan of criminals, and I'm definitely not a fan of crime. When somebody get their head beat off so bad in the back, in the back of the head. Now, I know that can cause injury. It can cause severe brain damage. Uh, it can cause uh, irreparable damage, and so we definitely don't want to shame the victim. But, homie, when you get beat up in the back of your head so bad, that you just lay there and you don't even check to see who beat you up. You just lay there on the, on, the, on the ground and you just go ahead and fall out and call the name of Jesus. That's worthy of laughing at. Hold on, bro. It's hard to watch. A San Francisco woman is attacked from, by a stranger from behind. 
and the entire assault you see right here is caught on camera. Tonight, we are hearing from the that woman. Was a weak, those are some weak punches, too. Who said she was just making a stop at her neighborhood corner store. Here's NBC Bay Area's GMA. Nope, she knew you. That's Kate Riken walking into her Potrero Hill neighborhood. And what's, listen, white people, and when I see black people do this a lot of times, it makes me cringe because I know y'all got it from white people. So shout out to my snow bunnies in the building. I appreciate y'all for supporting the platform. But what is up with y'all walking in and going shopping in y'all pajamas? Don't you know that when you leave outside that the pajamas basically get contaminated from the streets? And even the house shoes and stuff is no longer house shoes. They're now street shoes. So when y'all throw on a hoodie, that's not enough. You need to brush your teeth, comb your hair when you come out the house take them pajamas off and put on some pajama jeans at least, and then put on some re regular shoes because when you go home and you get in the bed and you still got on your pajamas, you nasty. You are nasty when you do that. Corner store Tuesday afternoon. She waves hi to the store owner and then a woman in a oh, pink sweatshirt nice comes in and out of sleepy. nowhere grabs Kate's hair from behind while slamming a bag with a bottle of Jack Daniels onto her head and begins her assault. And I was hit over the head with a plastic bag that yeah, had she, she glass right. bottles in it. Um, and then she just immediately started punching me in the head. And I'm not sure how many times. I, I had no like about 30 hits. On. The whole thing she never saw coming lasted fewer than 10 seconds, ending with the store owner of Kansas Food Market stepped in, tossing the woman out. Video shows a shocked and hurt Kate laying on the ground, wondering who and why, when she says she had no interaction with anyone outside. Hmm. When it happened on Tuesday, maybe a case of mistaken identity. Afternoon, I was afterwards. I was just in complete and total shock. Yesterday, I was crazy angry. And today, I'm just completely overwhelmed. So we'll see what tomorrow brings. Today, Jessica Blazy pleaded not guilty at an arraignment after the district attorney's office charged the 26-year-old with two counts of assault. She was arrested while SFPD was on scene investigating. We're learning Blazy is also being held on a parole violation. District Attorney Brooke Jenkins said in a statement, it is random acts of violence like this that negatively impact a feeling of safety. She kind of cute, but one of the things that I'm also wondering, it seems like every single district attorney Almost every DA that I see that hit the TV is all women, and most of them are black women. Do, is that like a, a diversity, equity, and inclusion position? Um, district attorney, Fawny Willis, and all of them seem like all of the district attorneys are black women. She goes on to say, You got one here in Detroit. Office is committed to, quote, ensuring that we have appropriate accountability for those who commit crimes. The entire ordeal. I, I've never experienced anything like that before. Listen, either it was a case of mistaken identity or she got her leg back or San Francisco, they just got a, a head beating demon. It's all kind of demons running around the United States of America. Uh, let's, you, let's look at a good news story. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is the former Southwest Detroit Hospital. Uh, it is among the last, the very, very last abandoned structures. And it is a huge property. It is among one of the very, very last abandoned structures uh, within Detroit city limits, and it has now been purchased, scheduled for demolishing, and they're going to build a brand new soccer stadium. So Detroit will be amongst one of the first cities in the United States of America. And I just literally looked at um, a news story that said that for the first time in 50 years, over 50 years, uh, Detroit is now seeing a population increase according to the census and people are no, no, no longer leaving the city. Everybody is moving into the city, which is very, very good news. But uh, I actually explored this place. Here, before I even do this, before I even show you all this story, uh, let me show you that I actually explored this place before. Yep, that's it. That is it. I explored this place probably about seven years ago. Um, and a lot of people always say, Anton, you always talking about all of these other cities that be having all of this crime. Listen, I documented all the abandoned structures, all of the crime. I showed all of the city, and I've been showing what was going on in my city in Detroit for years, all right? And it's still up there, and it's not going anywhere. And it's funny. You can see me sitting in my Lexus back then. A lot of people think that you're just now getting money. No, I've been getting money for a long time. This is when I first had got past 10,000 subscribers. Man, that was a long time ago. I had just passed 10,000 subscribers, and um, yeah, I, I was just about to explore at this time. 
um, the abandoned Southwest Hospital in Detroit. What's going on is Anton from AntonDaniels.com. United Community Hospital down here in Detroit. I'm not even gonna BS y'all. Like, definitely disappointed in my exploration of this building because I came too late. So of all the buildings that I've explored, I had... So, a lot of people may not be familiar with all of my uh, content, that my earlier content on the Anton Daniels channel, but yes, that was one of the places that I explored. If you wanna go and watch that video, then go to the Anton Daniels channel. But yes, Detroit F-City or F-C uh, Soccer Club is now bought this new property and they are re redeveloping it for a soccer stadium. And it is literally right up the street from the Mich Michigan train station, which has now been put uh, over a billion dollars into redeveloping that. And so that's gonna be opening in June. So this is what's happening in the city. Drive along I-75 through Detroit, you'll notice it the old Southwest Detroit Hospital. Well, today, Detroit City Football Club confirmed they've acquired this land to build a new soccer stadium at the site. Right there in Corktown off Michigan Avenue near I-75, not too far from the train station. Victor Williams live for us there tonight. Victor, it does have a long way to go before it becomes a reality. Yes, that's right, Devin. It's going to be a minute, but it's something else to know that this hospital has been vacant since 1991. But soon it's going to be where the Detroit City Football Club plays and a lot of people are definitely excited. Another eyesore gone. This has been here for years, abandoned, uh, people in and out over the years. They had to put fence up to keep the people out. Mike Bauer is happy that the corner of Michigan Avenue and 20th Street will soon be the site of a new stadium for one of the hottest teams in the Motor City, the Detroit City Football Club. If you guys have never been to the Detroit City Football Club, man, that is one of the most raucous games. Listen. I've been to football. Well, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I've never been to an NFL game, so I'm gonna make I'm gonna check that off this year on the list. I've been to baseball games here. I've been to basketball games courtside. I've been to hockey games before. All of those teams are within the city. I've been to Detroit uh, City Football Club over there, and they now building a new stadium down here in the city. Uh, they're moving in the city specifically. It is the best experience from a sports team I have ever experienced in my entire life. If y'all never went to a soccer game or if you live within a city and you've never been to a Detroit City Football Club game, it is one of the most incredible, raucous, crazy, craziest fans, so much to do. It is the best of all the things that I've done as far as going to sports arenas and sports games. Soccer is the Best experience that I've ever had in my entire life is crazy. For goal, it's Morris, and it's in! There's Every so much period. more interest. Construction is set to start in the coming months with an estimated date of completion being sometime in 2027. Every time I turn around, there's another building gone that's been sitting there for years and years, empty and abandoned mm -hmm. all throughout the city. And it's really great to see the revival of Southwest Detroit particularly. This was a scary place a decade or two ago. It clearly shows the momentum the team has that continues to grow. Since 2016, hundreds of thousands of people from all over the world have become fans, so much so that the team has had to make the transition into something bigger than Keyworth Stadium in Hamtramck. I'm really happy to see that coming here and entry into the city, into the downtown, it's gonna be beautiful, especially with all the rebuilding of the bridge area. It's incredible. Now, more details on what is to come are supposed to be announced this upcoming Monday. Of course, we're going to let you guys know what takes place then for that special announcement. But once again, it's great to see that the city of Detroit is bouncing back in a minute. And literally, that is right up the street, probably within two miles from my spot. It's right up the street. Like Detroit. I said, it's right off of Michigan Williams. Avenue, and it's oh. a great place. So if you guys are unfamiliar with what's happened in the city, uh, one of the very few cities that's actually turned the corner and is not becoming a sanctuary city for all of that.